I'm Max Egan. I'm a mechanical engineer and MBA graduate from the University of Alabama. And I'm Travis Egan. I've been part of the manufacturing sector for the past 25 years. My son and I have traveled across the country to see the amazing advancements in renewable energy within manufacturing. For our final season, we decided to explore the world of autonomous vehicles, the batteries that power them, and the people and places responsible for its future. This is Manufacturing Explorers. All right, Dad, what are we up to today? Uh, why are we out here freezing, right? All right, so, you know, I taught you how to parallel park, right? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Great experience, right? Yeah. Pretty, pretty good parallel parker <laughs> at this point. What's a thousand times harder than parallel parking a car? I don't know. You tell me. How many times have you seen me try to pull the boat into the lake up north? Like maybe once. <laughs> <laughs> many, many times. <laughs> it's not easy. So listen, today we're going to take this truck right here. All and right. See if you can just simply drive it straight back to that snowbank. Okay. Seem like you could do that? Doesn't seem too hard. No problem. Let's try it. Yeah, let's do it. Am I going straight? Don't hit that cone. <laughs> Which cone? Which way am I supposed to be going? What? Is that what's... Uh... They said snowbank. All right, stop. Snowbank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pull it forward. All the way forward. <laughs> hey, gentlemen. How's it going? I think we need a little help. Well, yeah. we're from Magna. We're here to help. I'm John. John Hemp. Travis Egan. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Travis. Max Egan. Max Egan. Alex Cunningham. Max. Nice to meet nice you, John. Alex, you. the Cunningham. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> so how can you help us? Well, it looks like you're having a little trouble backing up. I'd say so. OK, so Magna's got this awesome feature on this truck that uh, we can activate with a simple push of a button, and you'll be able to go straight back, and it'll do it by itself. All right, straighter than you did the first time? <laughs> I would say considerably straighter. It's as simple as a button. Press that button right there, it's and the wheel will take control. OK. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. OK, now that's sick. Well, that was incredible. <laughs> Did you I mean, it? Super cool, yeah. Yeah, we right definitely on. needed that. <laughs> well, you think that's Excellent. cool? You think that's cool? You, you should come see how we make it. Can we? I'd love Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Let's set it up. All Free right. Tomorrow. Let's, tomorrow's the day. Let's do it. Yeah. We'll come back here and uh, take us in and show us how it's made. The next day, we headed out to Magna Electronics to see how they manufactured the components for the backup cameras that were used in the truck we were driving in. I've never been in the facility that manufactures electronic components, and Magna makes over 185,000 of them per week. So I was excited to see what was going on in this facility. This Magna division is managed by John Cunningham, whose son Alex is also a manufacturing engineer at Magna. As we entered this massive facility, we had to put on protective gear and wear special shoe attachments that would help ground our body to prevent electrostatic discharge from damaging the product. Not very often do I get to see sort of the, the more electronic side of things, the smaller components, and the automation going into that, so it's pretty exciting to well, see. Well, you're in for a treat today because we've got some incredibly small components and some very, very tight tolerances that, that we're going to show you out here. So here we are, guys. This is our uh, surface mount technology area. And we're going to walk you through the steps of uh, putting chips on boards. So we've got some larger chips, and we've got some small chips. We've got some small chips that are a quarter of the size of a, about the size of a human hair. They're pretty small. So I'm just going to show you where we start. We purchase a PCB board in, Okay. right? And these PC boards, are all of them are different depending on the product that we're going to do. We have some large PCB boards. We have some very small ones. We showed you some of the things, obviously, you know, this isn't a camera board because of the size of it, right? Our camera boards are about a quarter of the size. So we call this an array, 
right? In this case, this is a four up array. We have, a, they're generally about the same size as a whole, but we have arrays with 40 boards on them. Um, and this is a four board array, right? We actually track every single position of every single component place. So say you get a failure two years from now, we can trace back all the way to single component placements. Okay. Screw torques, you'll see as we go through the process, um, we track every single critical feature that gets applied start to finish. So we move on to the next station here. In order to do surface mount, you, you need to put solder on the board, right? Something has to hold the chip to the board. So this is called a stencil machine and all those little spots you saw that were silver, right? We basically have a stencil, the board goes in, and we wipe what we call paste, but it's solder paste. It's sort of akin to a 3D printer where you would, uh, like if you put a, a powder of metal across and then they would laser it, but, but essentially it takes that, that pass. Yeah, we have a, a tool that closely matches this board, right? And basically as you, as you wipe the solder across it, it goes through the holes and it, it leaves a little bit on the board. So as we move down the line now, this station is, uh, is a visual inspection station using cameras where we're looking at the solder that's been placed on the board and making sure that we have solder in every location before we move forward. So now, now we're into the fun stuff. This is, uh, this is pretty crazy. Look at all the different types of components that go into making one product here. So, and just the sheer size of them, right? I mean, if you look at how small some of the components we're placing here, you, you can barely see them, right? Yeah. It's pretty incredible that with a vacuum prick up second, you can pick those up and place up to 140,000 components an hour. And, and just to put it into perspective, when you look at these reels, you know, if, if you come in, you can see the size of the little squares. Yeah. Those are the components. Right. The holes are bigger, and they're, those are for just feeding the reel. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. And uh, these place within a tolerance of 25 microns. So just to put that into a sp perspective, um, a human hair is 120 microns. So it seems like these are customizable systems, right? You could, depending on what product you're putting out, you could add another two of these units or these larger units. These are, these are all about scale, yeah. right? So, you know, the reality is you could build your product with, depending on the number of chips you have to put on the board, that determines the number of machines you have because you have a certain number of bays, right? But again, you know, we could have two that are doing the identical thing in order to improve cycle time, as an example. Right? It was so interesting to see how all of the electrical components are essentially printed and manufactured together at such a ridiculously high speed. But now that we had seen how the electronic boards were created, Alex told us he had something exciting to show us about how the backup cameras were manufactured. So we mentioned earlier as excited. Um, this is what I was excited to show you guys about. So this machine is solely developed by Magna Engineers. Um, it is 100% proprietary to us. We spent a year and a half developing this machine and we've made 20 since then identical to this. So this machine basically assembles our imager to the lens. Basically what's so cool about this machine is with ultra high precision, we use the imager itself to align to the lens, right? So in a sense, we turn this on and use the built-in camera to actually find the perfect placement. Once it's in place, we tack it or set it in place. So the challenge with this in cameras, when we look at manufacturing throughout the world, the manufacturing we're familiar with for years is that you have a tolerance. You have a tolerance on this component. You have a tolerance on this component. You have a tolerance on that component. And as long as they don't overlap, right, from a stack up, you can put them together and it will always work. Our tolerance for the focus of these items is as low as 20 microns, right? So this machine, we basically put these three parts together. I'm doing it just like the machine with the same precision. <laughs> and then I, move, I turn this on and I take this lens and I move it in three micron increments just like I'm doing with my hands. Exact precision. Three micron increments until I get the best picture. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with, with what, how much you guys are taking on here. And quite frankly, I didn't really realize how much in the electronics 
industry specifically is still being ha is still happening here in North America, and perhaps it looks to me like it's growing. There's an opportunity for a lot of growth for manufacturing in the U.S. based on what we just talked about. Seeing how all of these electronic components come together and the strict tolerances down to just a few microns, it really gave me some perspective in a part of the industry that I was not familiar with. But before we left, they said they would let us take a quick peek at the LiDAR station. So guys, this is our LiDAR area. LiDAR is the latest and greatest in autonomous driving. Um, there are very few people doing this right now or implementing it in, in vehicles. Um, this is the latest and greatest for Magna right now. So unfortunately, a lot of that is pr proprietary. I can't show you everything, right? Machines from an outsider are fine, but um, maybe not in depth on module. At the end of the day, we're happy to have you through, but we got to do the right things too for our company. Understood. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. I mean, I, I feel like I know a heck of a lot more about the future of autonomous vehicles because of, of what we learned today. And we got pretty much the key technologies under our belt. And I'm uh, grateful for products like these to help me uh, reverse park my trailer in the future <laughs> when the need arises. I, I think we need to get you a 3D printer. So that's, <laughs> that's next. <laughs> that's next. <laughs> All right, that was fun. That was fun. So what'd you think? Uh, that was a really unique experience. Um, I really enjoyed like that it was like two father and son duos. Um, and actually I had some, I had some time uh, to, to talk to Alex one-on-one -on -one about his experience. Yeah, future is bright for autonomous and EVs, I think. Yeah. Next car for me is gonna be this Tesla, no doubt about it. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, uh, enjoyed the Cunningham boys. It'll be uh, good. Maybe we can come back and have a beer with them sometime. Absolutely. All right, let's see how this thing handles in the snow. What do you think? Let's if I start. Here we go. All right, what do we got? Five hours to home? Is it really that long? 